Okay, this is Marion Dorflinger on the road, on the trail, and this is a spider. Now, I walk this way frequently, and the last time I was here was, was only one or two days ago. This guy wasn't here. <laughs> this is right in my trail, and I'm going to take a long detour and say a prayer that he has a long life. <clears throat> it's awful close to winter, so God bless you, little guy or little girl. You belong here. And uh, I want to make a comment about where you are learning the most about nature. You see the traffic going by about 15, 20 feet away? Right here. Just off the pavement. Just outside the city, sometimes within the places in the city that have been abandoned. And that's where you learn the, what you need to know in this day and age about nature. Because... Nature will show you how resilient she is. Um, there was an extinction event. I don't know what the actual uh, precipitating event was. Might have been an, I think it was an asteroid. 98% of all life form, plant and animal, gone. And uh, that was sometime in the history of Mother Earth. And uh, at this point in time, there are around 8 billion human beings and a bunch of uh, other creatures. Fewer and fewer of the other creatures every day, thanks to human beings. But um, I uh, had a long conversation with a younger person about this extinction event and a lot of anger at the baby boomers. And I don't blame him because when we were 16 and 17, we were talking about this and saying we should do something about it. And um, a whole lot of those baby boomers grew up and got elected and voted for the people that got elected, uh, were successful business people, had lots of money, and um, nobody did what it took to reverse the trends that are now inevitable. Inevitable. We're, we're peeing our past the point of no return. And uh, the long winter is upon us and it will last generations but i say to i say to who will listen we can mourn the lost and after we've mourned the lost we can look at what still remains and we can teach ourselves to see the beauty in what is left and know that in time more beauty and new species maybe another maybe the first intelligent life form uh, as sure as in us. Uh, maybe the first intelligent life form will finally evolve. What? Well, they're all intelligent except us, is what I'm saying. But we're the only ones that manipulate the environment to this uh, atrocious extreme. Um, so, we got it coming. But th this guy doesn't. And I'm sorry. Um, but I hope if you're a girl, I hope you've laid eggs that they'll hatch, that there'll be hundreds of thousands of you guys. Um, I just want to say that the philosophy that I embrace now at the end of, at the collapse of civilization and the great extinction of many species and maybe humanity, maybe not, but either way, if I live, as long as I live, I'm going to say, see the beauty that still is and hope for the beauty that can be and teach that to your children. And 10 generations now, they'll say, oh, there is beauty in this world. We know there was beauty in the world that was destroyed, but look at the new things that are coming to be, you know? Look at the new things that are, that are evolving. And um, I mean, why, why go to the end of your days bitter and sour and angry and hopeless? And if there's no life after this, this life, We've talked about this before. There is the memory of you, what you said, who you were. And if you inspire somebody and that inspiration reverberates and, and uh, has a ripple effect for the good, that's your eternal life. It's time to stop thinking about yourself. And it's time to stop thinking about the present and know that the future holds hope. And hope is not wishing, wishful thinking. Hope is not luck. Hope is the mindset that there may be something worth going on for. And maybe is enough. 
I don't need to know for sure. If there's hope, by God, I'm going to keep walking through Death Valley. And if I die of thirst, I'm going to die on my feet. And they'll find me and say, that tough son of a bitch, he didn't stop walking till he was dead for 10 minutes. And uh, if I'm ever in a hard scrape, I'm going to remember this tough son of a bitch, and maybe I'll get through, and I'll live on for both of us. So, yeah, there I go. I, uh, I do have a hat, but the sermon's over, and I didn't pass it. So, you pass the plate before the sermon. That's how you get rich. That's how you get to be a TV preacher and have a, have a billion dollar uh, fleet of jets. But the kind of preacher that I am, the one that preaches about whatever it is, <laughs> we're the poor stupid bastards that always stay broke. But we spend a lot more time outdoors. So screw those guys with their churches and their billions. This is where it's happening, man. This, this right here, this right here, this is the beginning of the world after the end of the world. This is the new heaven and the new heaven and the new earth. This is it. The rapture has occurred. You're in heaven. Get busy and make it better.